Well, hello, my fiends. It's me, your fiend, David the Rock Nelson, and I got my nice hot java here. I'm going to stir it in my WGN cup that I got for free at WGN. Muscle Watch News. I'm on their show now every Halloween for five minutes since 97. I was writing it for three and a half years, three times a year, handwritten letters, and I wrote every station in Chicago, and then after three and a half years of letter writing, writing WGN like three, four times a year, keep telling about my new movie I'm doing, and I sent Xerox pictures. I, ze I made the Xeroxes at, the, at Kinko's, and I made my own letterhead with a typewriter, and I enlarged the lettering on the enlarger in the Xerox machine, and I made the lettering bigger. It says, David Rock Nelson, film director, actor, ex-Marine, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, two pictures of me taken down here in my du dungeon, my basement, or my, my basement of bloody horror. Like my website on the internet, David Rock Nelson's Basement of Bloody Horror. Anyway, the Psychotronic Film Society gave me that. They gave me my first official website back in 95. They made me an honorary member of the Chicago Psychotronic Film Society. Formed by Michael Flores, fearless leader of the Psychotronic Film Society, who named me Edward of the 90s back in nine, November 92. This is before I did Conrad Brooks for his world. This is before I met Conrad Brooks. Then, in 93, uh, I met Conrad Brooks at the famous Monsters Convention 93. In May, in May of 1993, at the, at the Sheridan Hotel at the Crystal City Sheridan in Arlington, Virginia. For the 35th World Con of Famous Monsters of Filmland. I met four Yakiman. The first person I met there was Dwight Fry's son, Dwight Fry, David Dwight Fry, who wrote a book about his dad, who was in who was Renfield in the original Dracula in 1930, and um, Fritz in Frankenstein, the Hunchback Assistant. Here I come. Here it comes. Yeah, he's, yeah, anyway, I'm trying to imitate him when he goes, when he's cutting down the hangman, he goes, here it comes. Is it all right? How about in, how about in Dracula? He plays Renfield. <laughs> flies? Poor puny things. Who wants to eat flies? Why you do, you loony? Not when I can have nice fat spiders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Master! Yeah. Anyway, uh, and I was in Skid Row Dracula by Buddy Barnett, who, by the way, gave Conrad Brooks vs. the Werewolf, which I'm about to tell you about. He gave it a bad review when I sent him a VHS copy in 93, or and uh, he said he called it an excretion. He says, this movie is an excretion, and that's being kind. And then I got reviews by Psychotronic Magazine and stuff. Oh, man, I got all kinds of reviews. Uh, uh, here's an ad. An early ad by that Conrad put in cult movies. His buddy, Buddy Barnett. His buddy, Buddy Barnett. Conrad Brooks was world. But, you know, I wasn't making any money off that, you know, because Conrad was selling it. But, you know, but I was making money my, selling it individually. I made my own ad. This is my ad that I made. And it was placed in uh, video, film, uh, video, uh, some video magazine. That uh, underground video, something. Anyway, um... And Backyard Cinema, magazines like that. Keith J. Crocker, guys like that. Oh, anyway, uh, would review my movies. And here's an early ad for my video. This is the first cover. Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf. That's a cover. Actually, I know, and I, I use these as flyers and hand them out as flyers, too. It had my address on here. Here's the second flyer I made later on for the DVD version. Back in 2007 when I finally put my movies on DVD. And here's... The original, uh, two, you know, I make two copies at a time. The cover for Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf. There it is. But I want to tell you. So anyway, I met Conrad at the famous Monsters Convention. I go up at his table and this guy goes, Hey, I'm Conrad Brooks. And I'm like, so I'm, I'm, wondering, I'm thinking like, who are you? He goes, yeah, I was in the worst movie of all time, Plan 9 from Outer Space. And I'm like, okay. And uh, I came by later, and he keep, he stayed on me. He goes, he goes, hi, hi, I'm Conrad Brooks. I was in the worst movie of all time, playing on From Outer Space with Ed, by Ed Wood. And I'm like, okay, but what, what's so great about Ed Wood? I didn't know that much about him, right? But I heard his name because Flores already gave me the name Ed Wood of the 90s, right? Like a year, about five months before that. But I, I didn't know much about Ed Wood. Flores, Mike Flores is the first one to tell me about Ed Wood. He called me the Ed Wood of the 90s because he says, when he saw my Werewolf vs. Dracula movie filmed a year before Conrad vs. the Werewolf, he said, oh, this movie is out, off, out of your mind, off the ceiling. And he told Brian Windorf, who is now, by the way, 
co-founder of the Chicago Underground Film Fest with his pal Jay Bliznik. Well, anyway, they run Chicago Underground Film Fest. He tells him at the door, November 92, this is before he was running the Chicago Underground Film Fest. He says, I swear, this guy's the Ed Wood of the 90s. He makes movies just like Ed Wood. He has no script. He uses his friends. He has no budget. His movies are out of your mind, off the ceiling, off the wall. I swear, this guy's the Ed Wood of the 90s. He was telling that about me. Flores was. Well, I ran with it. That's how I became the Ed Wood of the 90s. Then later he changed it to the Ed Wood of the 21st century. Ron Adams of the Monster Bash started calling me the Edward of the 21st century in 99 because it was getting near 2000. So he's, we're going to call you the Edward of the 20th century. But Mike Flores made it official. He's the one that started it. Michael Flores wanted, saw, saw the, the similarities between me and Ed Wood, and he, he made it official. September 15, 2007, he said, David Rock Nelson is the Ed Wood of the 21st century. And he says that on the new DVD documentary by Struffin Taylor of November Fire. Videotaped by our fiend, um, what's his name? Well, you know, Chuck, uh, Chuck from Bump Night Productions. And, uh, what's his name? Oh, man, I can't remember their names now. Uh, his buddy came here. What other their names? I forgot their name. Anyway, the guys that videotaped the documentary. Anyway, so... Now, they made a doc documentary called The Ed Wood of the 21st Century, and it's on DVD from November Fire. And here is the original script. Conrad comes up and goes, hey, he says, hey, I make, uh, he says, uh, hey, Rocky, you make your own movies, right? And I go, yeah. He goes, because I'd like to be in your pictures. <laughs> he says this the day after the famous Monsters Convention, you know, May 93, we're sitting in the lobby. He buys me a Hershey with almonds. I don't know how he knew that was my favorite candy bar, Hershey with almonds. And, he, and then uh, we're sitting out there, and um, he says, because I want to be in your movies. And so I, on the way home, on my bus trip, with a napkin, the only thing I had to write on, and a, and a pen, I wrote the script for The Werewolf of Baltimore. There it is. You see it right there. See, it says up here, right up there, The Werewolf, Baltimore, Maryland, right there. Baltimore, Maryland. The original title, that's the original script written on a napkin, The Werewolf of Baltimore. And I wrote it on both sides. Look at that. The original title was Werewolf of Baltimore, but I changed the title to Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf so people would know there's a star in it. And here's my original script for the sequel. Page, there's three pages on a little piece of scratch paper. This is a Xerox of it. The script for the sequel, Man from Plan 9, which I later changed to Demon Monster from Outer Space. It also had another title called The Rock vs. the Monsters. And then later on, I... Uh, I changed it to, uh, you know, Demon Monster from Outer Space. So it would sound kind of like Plan 9 from Outer Space. And then I'm, I'm doing one called Werewolf's Revenge, where the werewolf gets revenge on Conrad. I videotaped that already. I just haven't edited it yet. And then the Werewolf of, werewolf of Chicago, two sequels to Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf. Um, but I changed the title. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, I did another sequel, the direct sequel to Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf. That was Werewolf and the Witch, which I finished in 2007. That's when they showed my movie at the Sonatech nightclub in Chicago. Sonny Ghoul was there, Michael Flores was there, and a crowd of about 15 big fans of mine. They were having a good time, and that's when Flores made it official. I am the Ed Wood of the... He says, I'm making it official. David the Rock Nelson is the Ed Wood of the 21st century. He said that, so it, so it must be true, because Flores said so. i got to shorten this up, because you got to show the stick movie. Here is my script on the back of a le of an empty letter, an empty uh, envelope, letter envelope. It said, my lines for Werewolf vs. Dracula. I go, yeah, ha, ha, where I'm imitating Conrad. I said, I got it, the spike. Yes, sir, the silver spike, my fiend. I'm going to ram it in through your head. I'm going to ram it in your skull, werewolf. Ah, I'm going to ram it. Ah, ram the spike in your skull. I'm going to ram, I'm going to ram it. I'm going to ram it right through you. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. And then, you know, um, <laughs> but anyway, oh, then here is a letter from Conrad. Look at that. He wrote to me. He wrote this in, I believe it was November of 94. He says, after I finished Conrad vs. Wolf, he says, receive your letter and check. We'll be sending you the video. He says, he says, the movie, the vi he's talking about the movie, Conrad Brooks vs. Wolf. He says, I'm the star with Rocky. Edward of the 90s and into the next century. You can see it underlined right there. Conrad said it. Your pal Conrad Brooks, he said that. 
He said that before it was made official so hot. He agreed with Flores. Here's a review in um, Cult Movies for Conrad Brooks vs. The Werewolf. Where Buddy Barnett said, called it an excretion. Shame on you, buddy. But later on, he recanted, and he gave my Mummy 1993 movie, which I sent him the next year. He gave that a good review, and he said that was good. And now Buddy and I are friends. And I was in his Skid Row Dracula, and I played Renfield in it. But I don't know how much of my scenes he used, because he had another guy playing Renfield. But I'm the better Renfield. I can imitate Renfield better. Amen, brother. And here's a review in Draculina magazine. Conrad Brooks versus Werewolf, where they gave it a bad review. Yeah, we wrote nasty letters. My girlfriend and I wrote nasty letters. You know, Janet, Vampire Woman. We told them the movie was good. Here's a review in um, Psychotronic magazine for Conrad Brooks versus the Werewolf. Right down there. And he said, he said, hey, this is what he says. This is what Weldon says. I'm not, uh, he says, everything in this movie was bad. Um, or was that Buddy that said that? I think Buddy said it. Let me see that. Oh, yeah. He says, um, no, no, no. Everything in this tape is terrible. Everything in this tape is terrible, but watching the three Brooks Badirsky brothers, they appeared in jailbait, is an experience. Henry is 84, Ted Brooks, Ted, Conrad's brother, appeared in Female Trouble. He's at 76 in, his, in my movie. And Conrad was 63 then, so. But they agreed to be in my movie, so, you know. And I bought them lunch, you know. And, well, you know we had lunch down in Fells Point at that diner, right? At Fells Point Diner, you know. Had a good time. I think Conrad's uh, nephew wanted to interview me. His dad works for that, The Sun or whatever, that newspaper. Here is a picture that was not used in the movie. That's me wrestling with Conrad right there. It's me wrestling with Conrad. I wanted to do a wrestling scene. I forgot to film it. I seen him wrestling. And here's here's a copy of it. And there's another picture from the movie, which I used to autograph for my fans. Anyway, I actually got an award for this. Look, there is the award. Lucky Charms Awards at David Rock Nelson's Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf. Certificate of Merit. Certificate of Merit. So that proves it's a good movie. I don't care what the critics say. Like my friend Johnny Trollster or whatever his name is. <laughs> Johnny Holster. <laughs> he said, rock on, rock. He said, here's to your critics. Rock's rubbing it in your faces. He's rubbing it in your faces, brother. And here is the, here is the original video, Conrad Brooks vs. World. Here's the master that, for, that I edited for making copies on VHS. I, like I said, I used to sell it on VHS. Here's some other covers. Old flyer. I used to hand these out as flyers. These are old, made in 93, man. You can see the fold there. Look at that. See how old they're? Yeah, nice pur purple color. Anyway, this is the original tape. See, Conrad Brooks versus Werewolf. There it is. And they still plays. Save your master VHS, man. It's not trash. You can always make a copy of it on your computer. You can hook up your VCR somehow. There's ways to upload it to the computer or make a video copy, make a DVD copy, whatever. But save your masters, because if something happens at DVD, DVD is scratch, brother. And if they scratch, you get a, ma a magic marker mark on the bottom. It ain't going to play. If it gets scratched, if it falls and cracks, it ain't going to. If it cracks, it ain't going to. If it falls, it might play. But if it scratches, man, good. If it's a, or if it gets a magic marker mark or someone writes on the bottom, it won't, it won't play. So save your master video. Save your VHS. Long live VHS. I heard VHS making a comeback. I shot all my movies on hot video 8, regular video 8, not high 8, with my 8mm camcorder. This is, and I got a high 8 later. This, this actually um, is a high 8. And then I got this other regular 8 handy cam. This is a regular video 8 handy cam, which I got for 50 bucks from a friend. That's the only one that works. This one works a little, but they're getting worn out. But uh, I still edit on the, on the video, on the VHS video, the master, and then I make a DVD copy. And then I make a couple copies of the video onto DVD, and with one of those DVD copies, I run off copies. That's not pirating. I'm distributing my own movie that I directed and I filmed. That's not pirating. Pirating is selling illegal copyrighted tapes, copyrighted by other people. If you dupe those to, to make money off them, that's pirating. 
I only make, I only copy and sell my own movies. I do it to, when people say, hey Rock, can you, can you copy some for me? I got some movies. I said, are they home movies or are they most motion pictures? Oh, they're motion pictures. I, no, I can't do it. Oh, come on. I thought I could save some money. I said, I said, man, I can get in trouble for that, for one thing. That's not why I bought my equipment. My equipment is for my movies. My movies only, brother. You know, you want to buy your movies, go to Blockbuster. And at, one guy, one guy says, hey, Rock, when Svengoolie shows beginning of the end, this is my bus driver, makes a heck of a lot of money, right? Got a government job, a federal job, right? Making big bucks. I don't even have a job, right? I just make money off my movies, right? I'm living off what I have saved up, which is running all low now. I need to start, I need to get a thing. See, I got a life. What I need is a job. <laughs> Take this job and shove it. I don't want to work here no more. I don't want to work for no nasty bosses, brother. I don't like bosses looking over my shoulder every time. That's why I'm going to make my money another way. Uh, by selling things, by doing temporary work. But I'm going to get a regular job probably because I need the income. I just have to put up with the boss. Hopefully I'll have a good boss this next job. I might work at a grocery store. But anyway, it's all, you know, bagging groceries, whatever. Putting stuff on the shelf. At least I'll have a paycheck, right? And I can do this on the side as a hobby. Monster movie making is my hobby. I was in the Marines for four years from 76 to 80. I was on a varsity wrestling at a Bible college, Maranatha Baptist Bible College, from, 70, from uh, 1980 to 85. And I was a varsity wrestler four years. And my wrestling coach was an Olympic gold medalist, Ben Peterson. So he was 72 gold, 76 silver, and he made the 80 team. And that 80 Olympics was boycotted because of the terrorist threat. But he made the team. And so, hey, my wrestling coach was Olympic gold medalist. The only guy to beat him was Chris, big Chris Taylor, who weighed like over 300 pounds. He'd sit on you. That big guy, he'd eat a couple pizzas for lunch, a whole chicken for lunch. And, uh, he'd sit on you and pin you. My coach escaped, got an escape against him, and he did not get pinned. That's an accomplishment in itself. Not getting pinned by Chris Taylor is an accomplishment, brother. But that guy pinned everybody. He was so big. Okay. Enough of my yap, and I'm going to shut up. By the way, here's the mask. Right over here is the original mask from Conrad Brooks versus Werewolf. There it is. See, that, that the oorah rot. I call it oorah rot. That's the Marines say oorah when they attack. Or when they see a beautiful girl, they go oorah. That's our motivation call when we attack. When we attack the enemy or we attack the girls or the ghouls. <laughs> like I, like uh, one girl said there at that store when I had my suit coat on, she goes, Oh, you look so handsome and dressed up and your hair is cutting. And I go, yeah, well, my mom says I'm handsome too, so I figure if my if Mom Rock says so, it must be true. And I said, yeah, I got a face only a mother could love. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but you know, my goofy thinks I'm handsome and the girl in the store thought I looked handsome. So, hey, and Mom Rock, my mom, my mommy, or my mommy said so, Mom Rock, Harriet Nelson. Not the one from Ozzy and Harriet, but there's another Harriet Nelson. If she said so, if she said I'm handsome, it must be true. Because Mom Rock said so. Amen, brother. May she rest in peace. She passed away uh, March 28, 2011. And by the way, later that night, instead of moping and feeling real depressed, I decided to do something positive. So I decided to finish my movie, Giant Horny Toad Monster, which I finished that night at 10.33 p.m. Central Time, which is 11.33 p.m. Eastern, down and down here in my dungeon, right down here, I finished editing... Uh, the giant horny toad monster. Over three years in the making. And here is the star of that movie. There's the horny toad monster. Rawr, it's coming to catch you. Rawr. If you don't watch this movie, the horny toad monster is going to catch you. So that's your, and by the way, if you think this mask looks bad, look at this. This is the mask from Frankenstein Stalks. Look at that. Look at all the, the, the dry rot. I call it oorah rot. Look at that. The whole face. It just broke off, man. A chunk of the mask just fell. Look at that. That's right, we Frankenstein saw. That was a $9 mask I got over here at the at Jewel Osco. Yeah. Another piece just fell off, man. This thing's falling apart. Look at that. Another piece of my Frankenstein me. Okay, I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna put this back. You can see my all my memorability. If you don't watch this movie, my skull's gonna get you. And my other skull. And my devil ant's gonna get you. And my lobster monster's gonna get you. Rawr! And my alligator monster rawr, that I, I wrestle in my upcoming movie, Gator Gale. Rawr! And Fishman's coming out. I plan to finish that this week. Fishman coming soon on DVD. And if you don't watch this movie about a rock, I'm gonna get you with my brick. Rawr, rawr, I got you. I just wanna. Sh hey, I'm 57, but I still got it, brother. I still got it. Rawr. 
Uh, oh, by the way, this is my movie, upcoming movie. I want to say that this is the Horny Toad Monster. Get your Rock Nelson, Horny Dave Rock Nelson, Horny Toad Monster T-shirt for only twenty-five stinging bucks plus five dollars postage. Help out there! I got two more. He's left. Two large sizes left there. Then I'm gonna make Fishman shirts. I gotta have my nice hot Java. Go go go. Go go go. Ah, drink good. Go drink good. Ah, Frankenstein. Ah. Oh. Are you jealous of my body? Ah. Ah. Hey, look. I had prostate cancer, man. Look at. There's a scar. That's from the surgery. There's a scar. There's a scar right there. And there's a scar. See that line right there? And see that? It like kind of goes in there. Yeah. So they pull out the prostate. They, they, they cut it up. Laparoscopic robotic surgery, August 20th. They removed my prostate cancer. Because I had cancer. I, I had a Gleason score of like seven. So it was kind of risky. That's what they call a Gleason score. Yeah. It's called prostate. It doesn't happen to every man, but I'm I'm 57 and they checked. They I said you guys ain't gonna find nothing. Down at the VA hospital, Heinz in Maywood, because I'm a veteran. I I get my help the VA. They covered my surgery. They paid for the whole surgery. I didn't have to pay anything, brother, because I'm a low income marine. I don't make a lot of money. I don't have a like a steady income. So they covered it. The hospital stay. The phone calls. I got to call my friends up and I, I free food. I gained like seven pounds. I went from 163 to 170. But then I lost it again because I got bloated because the fluids in my body from the operation. But that went away in about 10 days. It, the body just absorbed the fluids. So then I started gaining weight gradually, like one pound a month. One or one, one, one two pounds a month I was gaining. They, and, but I couldn't start to exercise for a while. I, I, I had to wait about two months before I could start doing bodybuilding stuff. But light. I started doing chest press, you know, without weights. Sitting in my chair doing this. And after a few weeks, you know, I'd use more intensity. Yeah, you know, a little ten, five, ten minute workouts each day, you know. And I do a different exercise the next day, you know, rowing. Last night I did rowing to work on my biceps. But I want to say something. Uh, are you people jealous of my body? Uh, Zach Carlson, are you jealous of my body? Uh, Tommy, Tommy, are you jealous of my body? Vulcan video, Maximilian, are you jealous of my body? Uh, you're a nice guy, but I, I know you're jealous of my body. Uh, uh, and Max at Alamo Draft House Cinema, are you jealous of my body? Max, who looks like who looks like um, the guy who did Jurassic Park video, Weird Al Yankowitz. He looks like Weird Al Yankowitz. Uh, Max, are you jealous of my body? I know you are. Uh, uh, yeah. When in my movie, Count Werewolf and the Witch, I'm taking a shower, trying to wash off the pentagram because I'm the werewolf. You know, like Paul Nashie did in his werewolf movies, trying to, trying to get rid of his pentagram. He had that big star in his chest. So I do a shower scene in Werewolf and the Witch so Pete, the girls and gals can see my illustrious, luxurious body. And, you know, <laughs> I was 145 then, but I was muscular. And um, I'm bigger now, I'm stronger now than I was then. I'm a lot bigger now. I'm washing it off, and you hear the voice. It's really my voice. I dub over. This is the sequel to Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf, by the way. And I go, hey, Rock, your body rocks. Hey, Rock, rocks hardcore. Hey, Rock, your body rocks. Hey, hey oh, Rock, you got a nice body. You got a nice body. <laughs> See, I did that because I would get weird calls late at night, 2, 30 a.m., 4 a.m., 3 a.m., 5 a.m., 5, 30. These guys kept calling me from Ohio. I call them the weirdos from Ohio. They're fans of mine. I met them at a convention. They would call me up late night and say, Hey, Rock, Rock, you, you got a nice body. Rock, you got a nice body. Hey, Rock, we love you, Rock. They call me up at 2.30 in the morning saying, We love you, Rock. I think they were drunk. They were high. Something. Anyway, okay, uh, but, you know, so I made fun of that in my Devil Ant 2. I get prank calls. And so I'm, I dubbed my voice over the phone to make it sound like they were calling me. And I'm saying, yeah, you guys need to stay, you guys need to uh, stay off the drugs, you know. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, if I'm, one guy said, I said, if you guys were my son, I'd give you the spanking you never got. And they said, one of them said, oh, Rock, that, that, I want you to spank me. You know, I, <laughs> he said, Rock, that turns me on. I want you to spank me. So I do that in my movie, you know, I narrate their voice. Well, I imitate their voice. I imitate their voice. 
So are you jealous? Are you guys jealous? I want to ask them. I want to ask you something. What, Tommy, are you jealous of my body? Josh Johnson, how are you? I won't say anything because Josh Johnson, responsible for getting my movie screened July 1st, uh, two years ago, 2012. And he's a nice guy. He got me down there first class, man. I love Josh Johnson. He's a great guy. And I want I want to crash his wedding and I'm going to bring the devil ant with me. Where's my devil ant at? I'm going to bring my devil ant and he's going to wish you a happy wedding and he's going to crash your uh, wedding uh, bad banquet. Rawr! Yeah, we're going to eat up all your food. I'm going to put a leash on so he doesn't eat up all your wedding cake. Yeah. Okay, but I want to say something, you know. I'll see you there, Josh, because I'm crashing your part. I'm crashing your uh, wedding reception. The reception. I don't, I'm not worried about the wedding. I just want to go to the reception and get the free food and free drinks and get buzzed. Amen, brother. And I'll let you pay the transportation if you want, even though you probably won't. <laughs> it already cost you a lot to get me down to the Alamo two years ago. Good, good, good. Ah, it's a good job. I gotta go upstairs and watch a rifleman now. I love and I have bull chili watch a rifleman. Now what oh I'm gonna say something. Josie Emba! Josie Emba, are you jealous of my body? Let's Look at the last right there, man! I was in three decades Chicago Golden Gloves. 70s, 80s, and 90s, I competed. I didn't win it, but I had 28 amateur, 26 amateur fights. And I fought in the Marines on the Subic Bay boxing team in the Philippines, in the PI, 77 to 78. I won my first fight, lost my second, to an all-Marine champ who boxed like Joe Frazier. So I fought the best, bro. I, fought, I lost to the champ. And I almost went the distance with him, too, like Rocky did. <laughs> Smoking Joe Frazier, left hook, my favorite fighter. <laughs> then he passes the ends of pass man. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. Put my shirt back. Put my shirt back on. Like Ron Adams says in my speech. Come on, Dave. Put your shirt back on. Come on. That's disgusting. Come on, Dave. Put your shirt back on. Oh man, I'm tired. Okay. Now sit back and watch Conrad Brooks versus the Werewolf. It's my movie I made in 93. I filmed it in four days in Fells Point and in Dundalk, Maryland and in Hagerstown, Maryland. Home of Frederick C. Weibel Jr. who did that book on the 1910 Frankenstein by Thomas Edison and has added on VHS video. Here it is. There's the VHS video of the 1910 Frankenstein right there. Yeah. That's the video I bought from Frederick C. Weibel. And he appears in my Deadline movie. He gets attacked by Deadline because he goes to Monster Bash sometimes. Monster Bash. There's my Frankenstein mask all eaten away. Here's the cardboard fez cap I wore in Mummy AD 1993. I made it. I couldn't find my grandfather, Carl Nelson, former Chicago cop on horseback back in the roaring 20s and 30s. Yeah, he used to patrol through Lincoln Park in Chicago during the days of Al Capone and, and Babyface Nelson and... And uh, Frank Nitty, Ness Ness, I've had up the hero witness. I met the guy that played Frank Nitty in The Untouchables, Bruce Gordon. He died in 2010. And I met Paul P Picerni, who played Agent Lee Hobson, L.A. Ness's right-hand man on The Untouchables TV show. I met him and Bruce Gordon same time at a convention over here in Rosemont in 2004. And my picture taken with him. Nice guys. I bought an autographed picture of Paul Picerni as Agent Lee Hobson with uh, Robert Stack as L.A. Ness. I got it in my album, uh... Here's my first cap from my Mummy 1993, which I did, which I actually videotaped a month before I went to Baltimore to film Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf. This was before Fanix, this is right, but this is like a month before Fanix. So anyway, I want to say, and I, I actually filmed it a month before, but I released it on video and edited it after I finished Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf. I edited it later. Arise, now, arise, O oh Mummy, from your tomb. The world has forgotten about you. Show the people of the world you're still around. Yes, show them. Show them who you are. Go now, oh mummy. <laughs> yes, mummy. Yes, oh mummy. I will accomplish my mission. And you will help me, oh mummy. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to shut up.
Like I know people that like like they say on the honeymooners, Ralph Framden, Bellevue was calling. <laughs> and here's the flying saucer from Dracula from Space. That's one of the movies that Flores was watching when he gave him the name Edward of the 90s, back in 92. And there's my new Frankenstein mask. Here's my jungle hat from Subic Bay, Philippines. And see it says Philippines right there. Right there, see? Old 311 Grunt. B Company, Marine Barracks, Subic Bay, Philippines. Nelson, D.E. David Elliott Nelson. Here's my jungle hat. Ura, I'm a grunt. I'm a ground pounder, the backbone of the Corps, the infantry. Ura, Marine Corps, Ura. They didn't call me Corporal Ura for nothing. As I was then, I still am a highly motivated, hard charging U.S. Marine. Ura. And when we see the beautiful girls, we go, Ura. Because we appreciate the beautiful women. Amen, brother. And then there is, there is my crayon drawing of Frankenstein and Dracula. And that was supposed to be Sandra, but I decided to draw a skull instead. Sandra from Ebony Costello meet Frankenstein, where Bela is talking to Glenn Strange as the monster when they're down in the down in the laboratory. Yeah, that's from they pick. That's Glenn Strange. Hi, Drac. Hello, Frankie. They're supposed to say, "Here, Frankie, come with me." But I changed. From second grade, that's a crayon drawing from Washington School in Park Ridge, Illinois. And there's a Bible verse. For by grace are ye saved through faith in that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's my skull. Because I don't believe in going to heaven by my works, because I'm not good enough, because I'm a sinner. I've sinned a lot of times. Hey, I lost my virginity in the Marines February 9th, 1977. That proves that I'm a sinner. <laughs> Wait. I shouldn't lie. I don't want to. I don't want to be a bad influence on you people. But I'm just being honest. I lost my virginity in the Marine Corps for 20 pesos. That's two dollars and seventy-two cents American back then. Yeah, it's people like, oh, you're a sinner. You're going at no. I'm just a man. You know, everybody. Everybody has had sex. You know, God made sex. So you know, I'm not going to condemn somebody because they get excited when they see a beautiful girl. Sure, I like Ronald Reagan with his abstinence thing, you know, keeping kids out of trouble and avoiding pregnancy and keeping kids out of saving your virginity until you're married. I think that's a beautiful thing. But I didn't make it. I didn't feel like waiting. I didn't want to get married to have sex. I saw a beautiful girl and I, I got down to business. I got down to business. That's when I became a man. I became a real man. <laughs> like that kid says on Seinfeld, I'm a man. When he kisses Elaine, he goes, I'm a man. Oh, there's my horny toad mask right there. That's the mask made by Carl Hopp, mask maker and sculptor from Timonium, Maryland. He made this mask, handmade, for me. Yeah, I think he has a mold, but he made me a copy of it. And I used it as a horny toad monster in my, in my movie. This box was made by Michael Flores, Flores fearless leader of Psychotronic Film Society. Uh, it was used for the play Bride and the Beast, which he directed the play of Edward's movie, the, of Edward's script. That's what rubber hand I use in... World vs. Dracula, popcorn, big screen TV, there's a Franken, there's Elvira, right there, Elvira, man, she's got a nice body, there's an article about me, son of wood, Schlockmeister returns, there's me, yeah, okay, there's me as a werewolf battling Frankenstein, that's the Bela Lugosi dub movies I went to right there, right there, Right there on Cherokee Avenue at Hollywood Moguls back in June, May of 95. I saw Devil Bat and Invisible Ghost and uh, Spela Ghosty movies there. With Buddy Barnett. He was there. And uh, I can't get through here. Ugh. Here's my B-movie victims right there. Right? B I got from my nephew. Give me this box of B-horror movie victims. That guy looks like John Agar. And I want to show, here's my Frank, this is my dungeon right here, see Frank's name. And up here is the poster I won, the Hollywood Moguls, because I got the answer right to a question at Buddy Bar, or they picked my ticket, I think. They picked my ticket. Here it is. By the way, here's a, here's a puppet made of me by a friend named Steve Markin of Monster Bash. Made that out of toilet paper tubes, a bag, and look, there's all Monster Bash 2007. He made this, that's me, holding a trick-or-treat bag. Isn't that cute? A rock going trick or treating, and there's candy in it. And then that's the poster I won at Hollywood Moguls. Dracula blows his cool. You'll darn near die laughing. Dracula blows his cool, starring Jamie Gillis as Dracula. It's love at first sight. And there's the shark monster mask I got from 
Chuck Jarman of Bump of the Night Productions. Oh, and Jace Whitman. Him and Jace Whitman are the ones that filmed the documentary, The Rock Edward of the 21st Century. But it was edited by Strephon Taylor of November Fire. There's videos. More video VHS. Yes, a poster of Smokey Joe Frazier, my favorite boxer, whom I, I met him three times. More videos. See, I got Spectre Man. I got Spectre Man videos. I got the Brainiac, Castle of Monsters, Devil's Men, Werewolves on Wheels, Mummy's Ghost, Mummy's Tomb, Mummy's, Mummy's Curse, Mummy's Hand, I Was a Teenage Mummy by Christopher Frieri, and Monster Piedras Blanc. It's one of my favorites. Oh, okay, I got this, the Bailey Go See video. If I, yeah, I think Buddy Burnett did that. Aurora Monster kit covers. Look at that. My basement above. I got those at Uncle Fun for a buck. And I got this for five bucks on Clark Street by Belmont. I got this for a dollar in the mail. Uh, I had a convention, a famous monsters convention in 93. There's a poster for I Was a Teenage Mummy by Christopher Frieri. And then there's a Frank Stein thing. And there it is. A Strange Universe poster autographed to me from Emmett Miller. See right down it says David. David, best wishes. Uh, uh, Best wishes to David right there. Best wishes, Emmett Miller. From Strange Universe, man. That's a strange universe. I was one of the five strange people in America. There is The Rock Edward of the 21st Century poster. That's me. By November Fire. Rock Edward of the 21st Century documentary. That's the, that's the poster for it. That's me. Holding my video camera, man. Because I shoot on video still. Nelson Unincorporated. There's me, I'm wanted for cattle rustling, horse thieving. Actually, I'm wanted for offending people and making monster movies in public without a permit. <laughs> wanted dead or alive. Now, I don't want you people hunting me dead or alive. And, and there's me buying my boxing pose from the Golden Gloves, 1988. Yeah, I'm huge. There's my Frankenstein model. There's my plastic axe. There's my trap, werewolf trap for werewolf 2010, where I get caught in the werewolf trap. I made it out of aluminum, aluminum pie pan. Yeah, there's a Cyclops. There's brute, an old brute aftershave bottle. There's my brother's homemade werewolf mask, the paper mache werewolf mask he made when he's like in eighth grade. There's my Frankenstein bank. Frankenstein heads, monster heads, everything. Draco in a coffin right there. Godzilla. The good old Godzilla. There's Frankenstein. There's a Peter Lorre guy, Peter Lorre, Bela Gossi, my favorite movie of his, Return of the Vampire, and Devil Bad, but they're both good. I got that model for 20 bucks. There's the Creature, the Creature Aurora model kit, like my brother Keith used to have back in the glorious 60s. Michael Antony's real witch mask, I got the Uncle Fun for a buck. Frankenstein figures, you know, the wax, Sinclair Dino Land figures, I got those made out of wax. I found this dinosaur on the lawn in front of our church. There's all monster, like King Kong, Palmer figures, Cyclops. There's the there's Frankenstein werewolf guy, but another group. And then there's there's the drag Bella Dracula man by Palmer. There's there's a Medusa. There's the werewolf. That's the first figure I had when I was a kid from those Palmer figures. The werewolf man. That's not Don Cheney. That's the Stephen Rich werewolf with the coat on and tie. Saucer men erasers. A brain from the B-Fest, the B-Fest 2000. There's me when I was in Bible college. That's me when I was in Bible college, man. There's the cast, White Castle, Werewolf, Wind-Up Creature, King Kong, all this stuff. Amling's Haunted House in Chicago. Yeah. Cool, huh? There, there, all cool monster stuff. There I am. There's David Nelson in Bible college. Here's Bob Burns as a werewolf. Okay, I'm going to shed. There's my King Kong bank. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Look at that. It came from outer space and cre creature from the Black Lagoon in 3D, man. 3D poster. I got that free from my friend, Mark Paul Stellick from Milwaukee. The vampire. And then uh, that's uh, this Invasion of Saucer Men. The original Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf Mask. There's that Godzilla thing hangs on your window thing. There's a Three Stooges pin I got at Clark Station back in 93. A little boxing glove. There's the ear that came off Conrad, uh, off my werewolf mask right here. It came off the other ear for my Conrad versus werewolf mask. There's Janet battling Dino Man, me as Dino Man in an upcoming short film. There's a crunty crab shell when I had all you can eat crab in Hagerstown after I filmed Conrad Brooks versus Werewolf, or uh, 
I stopped for crab over at Conrad's place at the uh, Subway. It's a racetrack. They have uh, all you can eat crab there. Yeah, for $15.99. There's all monster cards. You'll die laughing. Monster cards and stuff. Here's the monster laughs. There's there's the bat. You know. Here's the saucer man. It says, "I told you." He says, "I told you we were low on gas." Turn it over. See, monster laughs. See, first beast. I say your wife has fallen into the well. Second beast. That's okay. We use city water now. <laughs> That's funny. Here's the back of the "You'll Die Laughing" cards. Uh, you'll die laughing from the glorious 60s. Look at that. See, it's got like Frankenstein, Dracula on the left. Looks like the German Rollo's vampire on the left. There's a sea mo outer space monster. That looks like it, the terror from beyond space. That guy uh, in the background. There's a mummy. There's a wit. There's a hunchback guy. I must charge you for murder. All right. What do I owe you? You know, funny laughs on the back of these things. There's my horny toad, my wind-up horny toad. I used in Demon Monster from Outer Space. Plastic dinosaurs, plastic gorillas. I mean, I got everything, man. Frankenstein, Mark's figure. Yeah, and there's a miniature flying saucer, like the one I used in Man from Plan 9. Or Demon Monster from Outer Space. There's a creature figure, Mark's figures from the 60s. There's a mummy. There's the Gill Man from my favorite creature movie. Ah, uh, Creature Walks Among Us, made in 1956, the year I was born. There's a, there's a weird old mask I got for a buck. Glenn Strange, my favorite monster, my favorite Frankenstein monster. Arr. There's a hanging skeleton I got at Uncle Fun for 25 cents or 50 cents. Uncle Fun closed down. Now they're in uh, Baltimore. They're called Sideshows. It's in a, there's me, the late great ghost hunter, Richard T. Crow. Me and Janet, Janet on the left. And there's another world mask I got from Dan Zanal, Zanal Zombie Hut. Actually, I think I got that from Ken Kramer from Zanal Zombie Hut. And here's a uh, Dracula Pinata. My favorite Lunch and Mummy movie, Mummy's Tomb. There's a drawing of me. I was a teenage Frankenstein. Yeah, look at that. There's a Frank. I got that from Mark Paul Stelic, the vampire. He gave me that free. There's a Frankenstein I made at Bible College. I hung it in the window of our dorm. And I also made this Dracula one there that I hung in the dorm window for Halloween when I was at Bible College. Yeah, and here's a nice-looking chick I met on a man cow show. She's covering it up, so that's okay for the kitty. I got this thing here at the All Freaking Night Film Fest. This bikini was hanging around, so I grabbed it. Yeah, I when I at the All Freaking for All Freaking Night Film Fest that I hosted in 2007. I'm gonna turn up lighting. Oh, by the way, here's a potato gun. Now, look at that. He's sticking a potato and shoots from the glorious 60s. We used to play around with those things. I'm going to use it as a prop in my movies. Kind of looks like that gun that, um, what's her name, Tanya, um, what's her name? Satana, um, her last name was Satana, uh, the one that died from Ted V. Michaels movies. You know, Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill. Tara Satana, Tara Satana, whatever. Uh, I met her, she's a nice lady. I met her in 2002 at Cinema Wasteland. Got my picture with her. I got video I attacked her with the devil and Ted V. Michaels. Ted V. Michaels, not Michaels. And, uh, and the other girl that played the hot looking chick in Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill. Uh, well, that was actually it was Russ Meyer, wasn't it? Fester Pusket Kill Kill. I think it was Russ Meyer flick. But um, but uh, they also appeared in Ted V. Michaels, The Astro Zombies, Tara Satana. Uh, Tura, Tura Satana. She died, as you know, about a year or two ago. Uh, and anyway, she uh, appeared in um, Mark of the Astro Zombies, or The Astro Zombies. Yeah, they showed that late night on Channel 32 here, WFLD TV. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. I'll see you. That's it. I'm going to cut. Cut. Enjoy the movie. Hmm.